Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney is off tonight. Today, Idaho Governor Brad Little laid out a four step plan for reopening the state's economy as the threat of coronavirus recedes. Under stage one of the plan, which takes effect on May 1st, both retail stores and places of worship could be allowed to reopen, provided they can maintain appropriate social distancing. Stage two, set to run from May 16th and through the 29th, would see restaurants, hair and nail salons and gyms reopen as long as they can meet safely protocols. In stage three, projected for May 30th to June 12th, gatherings of 10 to 50 people would be allowed as long as precautionary measures are observed. The mandatory 14 day quarantine for people entering Idaho would also be lifted. Likewise, non essential travel will also be allowed to places that do not have ongoing transmission. The, the final stage is stage four. It's estimated to begin June 13th and would see the reopening of bars, theaters and other venues, as well as gatherings of more than 50 people as long as precautions are in place. New at five tonight, Congress has delivered nearly 500 billion more dollars to help small businesses and hospitals. The money will go to the payment protection program, economic disaster loans, and also toward ramping up testing. Five million of the funding will go toward the Washington Small Business Grant Program. Some North Idaho businesses are continuing to take a hit as Idaho stay at home order remains in effect and as the Canadian border remains closed. As we previously reported, some businesses in Bonners Ferry say about a quarter of their customers are from Canada. The border has been closed to non essential traffic for just over a month now, and leaders this week announced the closure will last for another month. Krem 2's Taylor Vito checked back in with Boundary County today and the businesses there to see how they're holding up. We're in a serious situation, there's no doubt. Our business is on the verge of collapse. These are shots from Jake's Landing last month before the Canadian border was officially shut down. Located in Boundary County, just a stone's throw away from the border, this convenience store says the vast majority of their shoppers are from Canada. Canucks will come down to buy cheaper goods and pick up packages. And one month into the border being closed due to coronavirus concerns, Jake's Landing says they're hurting. We aren't making a living right now. We're in a negative situation. We've had to lay off all the employees. They're not the only ones. Um, when I talk to businesses, it's painful. Canadians will often head down to Bonners Ferry to not only have fun, but to shop as well. The county's Economic Development Council says the border closure has acted as somewhat of a double gut punch to retail shops, restaurants, and grocery stores. About 30% of their clientele are from Canada. And right now, we're, of course, we're not seeing any Canadian traffic coming through town. Over the weekend, national leaders announced that the border closure would be extended for another 30 days. So even if Idaho's stay home order were lifted during that time, Bonner's Ferry businesses in theory would still be without their Canadian customers for at least some additional time. Those clientele are just not here. Their customers are, are gone. Look no further than the Kootenai River Inn and Casino. This time of year, about half of their customers are from Canada. We're just looking for the day where everything returns to normal and our, our businesses can uh, get back to, to normal revenue. Jake's Landing is certainly in the same boat. They've instructed their laid off employees to apply for unemployment. And the owner says until the border reopens, there's nothing he can do. We're literally at the mercy of, you know, the border. My family and I are, you know, just waiting and hoping. Taylor Vito, Crim 2 News. Hospitals, surgical centers, dental and medical centers will be allowed to resume elective procedures on May 1st in Oregon. The facilities must comply with new restrictions for COVID-19 safety. They must have adequate supplies of personal protection equipment and follow the CDC guidelines for their use. The nurses union in Washington is still expressing concerns over the shortage of PPE across the state. They say supplies would need to reach normal levels before beginning elective surgeries again in Washington. The WSNA is now saying masks are worn for extended periods of time and between patients, respirators are worn until breaking or becoming ineffective and face shields are reworn without proper cleaning, according to manufacturers recommendations. Sally Watkins, the executive director of the Washington State Nurses Association, said this week, quote, the bottom line is we as a state cannot reopen elective procedures before we have enough personal protective equipment for the nurses and other health care workers on the front lines caring for COVID-19. Nearly 47,000 Americans have lost their lives to coronavirus, but that number could spike following new research that suggests COVID-19 was silently spreading in at least 
five U.S. cities back in February, a month earlier than originally thought. California is beginning autopsies on people who may have died from the virus as far back as December. As medical workers leave New York City and head home, some new hotspots of coronavirus are emerging around the country. In Georgia, cases continue to rise, but the state's Republican governor is pushing forward with the plan to partially reopen. A new CBS News poll finds 70 percent of Americans say the nation's top priority should be slowing the spread of coronavirus, not getting the economy going. 71 percent said they would not be comfortable with going to a bar or a restaurant. 85 percent would not be comfortable getting on an airplane. 87 percent say they would not be OK attending a large event. Nevada is one state not letting up on social distancing, even after multiple demands from the mayor of Las Vegas. King County Metro on the west side of the state is allowing fewer people on buses at a time to promote social distancing. To help riders maintain six feet of distance, they are directing drivers to try to limit ridership to 12 per 40 foot bus and 18 per 60 foot bus. When the bus reaches or exceeds the optimal number, the driver will skip stops. The optimal number of passengers in the ADA seating, they say, is one. As millions of Americans follow stay at home orders, President Donald Trump announced that the Pentagon is planning a multi city tour by the U.S. military's top flight demonstration teams. And the Navy Blue Angels, equally incredible, will be performing air shows over America's major cities and some of the cities that aren't major cities. President Trump said the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds will fly over several cities to champion national unity. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, no official schedule has been released for either demonstration team. The president also promised a July 4th celebration for the public on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, we are not out of the woods yet in terms of the rain. We could see some for the weekend as well. Meteorologist Tom Sherry standing by at home now with more on the forecast. Tom? Yeah, we're tracking showers and thunderstorms tonight. Most of them will occur. Uh, the thunderstorm activity should decrease after about 730 tonight once the sun begins uh, to set. But you've seen the dark clouds begin to move in. If you'll follow me over to the Krem 2 remote weather window, we'll take a, an official observation for you. Yeah, we've got uh, some areas where the dark clouds are, but I also see some blue sky out there. We had pretty gusty winds earlier, not seeing the strong wind gusts right now. We do see stronger wind gusts, though, out in areas of central and north central Washington. Again, those will decrease later on this evening. So our current temperature is 63 degrees. We have wind out of the west. This is out at the airport. Wind out of the west southwest at 21 miles an hour. I'm not seeing that here on the South Hill, but we're seeing it uh, out at the airport. And again, it's uh, current temperature of 63. Take a look at these showers, folks. They're mostly in northern Idaho and up in British Columbia, as you can see. Uh, and we did see some isolated thunderstorms earlier that were moving. It looked like pretty much through the Mount Spokane area, maybe Green Bluff, and then over towards uh, uh, Post Falls. So there you can see a little bit of a lightning bolt at the beginning of your loop at four o'clock right there uh, towards the state line and uh, uh, Liberty Lake area. Uh, but for the most part, it looks like a lot of our shower activity now is beginning to to decrease. Let's get a closer view and show you what we're talking about. Again, a few showers out in the Spokane Valley, heavier rain along I-90 into uh, uh, into areas of northern Idaho, eastern Kootenai County. Uh, but we did see a little bit of a thunder boomer. We'll look for partly cloudy skies with an overnight low of 37. Should be dry on Friday and a high of 63 for the weekend. Rain Saturday. Looks like we'll see temperatures hit 61 on Sunday, but mostly dry. And then Sunday night, we may see a few more showers. I've got more details for you coming up uh, with your seven day outlook, and that is just minutes away. Well, Mark? looking forward to that, Tom. Thank you very much. We'll check back in with you later in the show. The financial landscape, certainly not great, there's no doubt, but nonprofits are still tasked with raising money and continuing essential work during this crisis. Well, today, the Idaho Nonprofit Center launched its own online campaign, Idaho Gives. The campaign asks people to donate online to support one of 630 nonprofits. Charities are scrambling to change the format of fundraising from large gatherings to online giving. Idaho Gives as one-way nonprofits can be part of something large while working individually. Tonight, Krem 2's Laura Papetti reports on virtual fundraising. It might be hard to measure kindness, to quantify it in numbers, and doing good certainly comes in all forms, a meal, a note, or a monetary donation. 
But if you wanted to measure kindness by the moment and by the dollar, Idaho Gives can give you a look at the good that's going on. Our whole team has been in tears just kind of watching this unfold from, from our homes instead of being together. But it's just people are inherently generous. The generosity can be tracked in real time on IdahoGives.org. What originally started as a one-day annual campaign was extended this year into a two-week online event. Organizers are helping raise money for well over 600 nonprofits providing exposure and marketing. Our nonprofits right now, all of them are doing a lot more mission-related work and the resources they have to do that work has actually decreased a little bit. Smaller organizations like the Double J Dog Ranch especially benefit from the marketing heft and reach of a major campaign. And like so many nonprofits, the Double J has had to cancel major fundraising events. Many charities like the Vanessa Behan Nursery and Habitat for Humanity have pivoted to virtual luncheons to raise dollars needed to complete missions that support important essential work, like providing safe spaces for kids and housing for families. While not hosting fundraisers is tough, online formats like Idaho Gives are used to working with a virtual audience. And the good news is that online viewership is up. You know, we've always been screen-based, and that's where we're all living right now. So our opportunity to engage in an even wider audience than we've ever had before is significant, and that's really good news. The ticker is running. Idaho Gives just launched. Now it's a wait and see, hoping that while being stuck at home, people still reach out to the community around them. Reporting in Spokane, Laura Papetti, Krem2 News. And we want to give a big shout out to all you seniors out there. The pandemic has caused a lot of changes, especially to our senior class. So we want to highlight them here at Creme 2. So today we want to give a shout out to Jagger Moore. He is a senior at West Valley High School. Keep sending in your photos. You can send them to creme.com slash class of 2020. That address right there at the bottom of your screen.